My vagina is a palace reserved for royalty. No one gets in without consent from the queen, which is me. My pubes have also been a huge part of my feminist identity and journey. I talk about them loads. I've had every pube hairstyle that you could ever want or have or need. Here are some poems about my pubes. Long pube. I took out my trusty ruler to measure my longest pube. It was about two inches long. Next up, the one on my boob. <laughs> Plucking. I like to pluck my pubic hair right on the panty line. Seeing that cuticle laid out bare, to me, is so divine. You do you. Feminists, you make your choice on how you style your hair. You can be a bushy tree or bald as a monk down there. My feminist vagina journey has also taken me to my labia. So I've done some close investigation of my labia. I offered myself up as a naked model for an artist who celebrates the rich tapestry of labia that exists. And that involved me plopping my labia onto a scanner. <laughs> These poems were inspired by that experience. What's that? I see something down below and it inspect my meaty flap. It's delicate as a snowflake. It's a toilet paper scrap. <laughs> Wonky labia. Why should people care if my labia don't match? They're charmingly lopsided. I love my asymmetric snatch. <laughs> cocktail sausage. I'm sorry, I read this one. Eating a cocktail sausage. I think gleefully, it looks like my labia. Fleshy, wizened, and meaty. <laughs> this is my final poem of the evening. Thank you for listening. One of my faves, Queen Lequeef. I'm Queen Lequeef, labia color of roast beef. When my poon farts and squeaks, I don't care 